G'day fellow mappers, it's Joe Sweeney here from Story Weaver Games. And uh, now that you've got your map looking beautiful, it's time to start putting down the text. Now, this sounds like it should be easy, but actually there's a lot of power and control in Campaign Cartographer with regards to text. So before we do that, I'm going to actually want to start talking about those settings. Now, uh, I'll illustrate all of the things I'm talking about. So bear with me before we actually get to putting text on your map. You're gonna learn some really useful ticks and tri uh, tricks and tips here. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna come to an area of my map outside of the regular grounds and I'm gonna zoom in. So I've got a little bit of a workspace. I just wanna give myself self some, some clear workspace here. Now, where you go about setting your text properties is here. And they call this the text specs button. And when you click on it, it brings up the text properties. Um, I'm gonna go through each of these properties. They, they're all fairly obvious, but some of them have certain nuances. So height, height is how high your font is. It literally is your font size. But unlike a word processor where a 14 point font is a particular size, no matter how it is, in, in mapping, we're dealing with the map units of a capital letter, of the height of a capital letter. So literally 18 is, or 20 in this case, is 20 miles high. So that letter H would be exactly 20 miles high. And that's really important. It's not a font size, it's a real world map unit size. Then you've got angle, obviously, that is the angle at which the text will be drawn. Spacing. Now, by default, this is normally set to 150. And what that means is if you're drawing multi line text, the spacing between those two lines would be based on this number here. If it was 100%, that means the two lines would be drawn straight together. If it's 150, there's half a width of one of those text lines, in other words, 10 miles in this case, between the two lines. Um, stretch. Uh, which again is normally defaulted to one, is a description of how stretched longitudinally the text will be. So we'll leave that as one for the moment. Um, new metrics, if you select that, then Campaign Cartographer will take advantage of certain facilities in true type fonts. I normally leave it off, it doesn't add a lot. Um, up to you, experiment with it. Obviously, the uh, character styles, bold, italics, vertical, which will turn the text around, um, angle of the letters can be actually changed as well. Um, underline, strike out, outline only, all fairly obvious functions. Then you've got the font, the font justification, the funk, woo, funky fonts, uh, the font justification. Um, mid, um, I'll, I'll click on this, you've got bottom, mid and top. Bottom will mean that where your cursor is, the text will be put on top of it. Mid is obviously the cursor will be um, put, put halfway through and top is obviously from the top. It's really how it's aligned. And then you've got, of course, left, center and right. I normally like to use mid left for my font placement, but not always. In this particular case, that's what I'm going to use. Um, then you've got the font selector. Now by default, there'll only be a handful of your system fonts in here. Um, select the font that you want. I'm gonna select Century Schoolbook for this particular demonstration, and then we'll start messing and trying out different things, but let's just start here. So just to recap, I'm going to draw some text on my screen, which is a height of exactly 20 miles, an angle of zero, a spacing of 150, and a stretch of one. I'm going to click on OK. To actually draw the text, you use this function here, this button here, which is the text edit function. This is a test of text. Now, notice if you push enter, you will just go straight to adding that text to the screen. Now, if you see here, look, that text, I'm just going to try and get that aligned, that text is aligned perfectly to 10, sorry, 20 miles high. That text there is exactly 20 miles high. Let's try a different one. Again, just clicking on the screen will repeat the last command. I'm gonna go multi-line. This is a test of text. And this time I'm going to push the enter key halfway down that line there. 
So if you don't have that multi-line turned on, when you push the enter key, it will just place the text on the screen. But if you do have that checked on, that means that you can now move to new lines. If I click that, and again, I'm gonna try and get that just lined up right. There we go. You can see that there is a decent amount of 10 kilometers, uh, uh, yeah, that would be 10 um, mile link in between that line and that line there. Now I'm gonna modify that and I'm gonna make this tighter. One, in fact, I'll, I'll go all the way to 100. I'll, I'll overdo it for this one. This is a test of text. I'll make it multi-line. And when we put this one on the page, you'll see it's much closer together. See how those two lines are much closer together from that one? So that illustrates the importance of spacing. I tend to find uh, 150 a little large. I think that 125 is about right for us. Now, obviously you can change things to bold and italics. And if we were to do a test, you would see that that would be so. So that's very quickly how to um, think about the various text properties. I'm going to mark all of those and delete them, refresh my screen. Now, the good news is that you don't always have to keep on coming over to the text properties. Let's say I'm working on some text. This, whoops, this is a test. And uh, I'm going, I can actually go to the properties directly from here. And in this particular case, I'm going to turn off the italic and bold, put it down. And if I was to do some more text, it's kept those previous properties. So you can actually shortcut how text you put down, uh, how you set the properties <clears throat> while you're putting down the text. Very useful. Um, you now know pretty much all you need to know about putting text down on a page. But really important, often with a map, you wanna run text along a curved line. To do that, you draw a line on the page. So there's a line. And then what you do is you use the draw text along a curve function. And if you click on the line now, this is text along a curve, a woot. I'm gonna copy that because I'm gonna use it again in a second. If I click on okay, you'll actually see that it's drawn along that line and it's also deleted the line. But note how the woot is sort of, it, it's a little bit cramped. This whole line is a little bit cramped. One of the challenges of campaign cartographer is that you really need to know how long the text is going to be before you can figure out the line, but you need to draw the line before you need to know how long the text is gonna be. So it's a bit of a challenge. So what you do is you estimate it as I've done here. I've nearly got it right, but not quite. I'm gonna use control Z to go back that just leaves me with my line. Um, notice that the line is, was drawn on the sheet grid, uh, which is why it's gone faded. Uh, doesn't really worry me. I'm just gonna turn the sheets off for the moment and redraw. There we go. Uh, I can use this node edit tool to make my line a little bit longer. There you go, I've made it just a tiny bit longer. And then when I go to draw my text along a curve. I'll just paste in the previous text that I had. Now it's looking right because I gave it just that little bit extra of space. So when you are working with text along a curve, always know that you're probably going to have to do it twice. Once just to get the right length, uh, once to get a feel for how long the curve needs to be. And then the second time to sort of manipulate that curve in a little bit longer either direction. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to know about putting text along a curve and putting text property and adjusting text properties. So let's actually get started putting some text onto our map. Right, I've just zoomed back out onto my map. I'm going to turn the sheets back on so I can see things nice and post-worked, beautiful. 
Um, the first thing we're going to do now is actually set the properties for naming all of the cities and towns. Generally, I name major cities in a slightly larger font than I name all the rest of the towns. So to do that, I'm going to click on the text properties button. I'm going to leave it at 20. In fact, no, I'm going to reduce that slightly to 18. I'm going to leave the spacing as it is, doesn't really matter. I don't want this bold, but I do want to think very clearly about what font I would like to see. Now, one of the challenges is that um, Campaign Cartographer does not show you a preview of your fonts. However, you can see a preview by clicking on more fonts, which will bring up a little pop-up box. Um, and then I'm going to scroll through and find the sort of font I would like. Uh, Georgia, no, no, that's not too bad. Let's try that one. Okay, and we click on okay. I'm just gonna do a quick test here first to make sure I'm happy with it. I'll make sure the text color is black or whatever whatever other color you would like. I'm going to use black for this one. Click and I'm going to call this city um, God's Mode City. And let's plot that one, say here. Um, okay, first of all, not overly happy with the font that I've selected. It's not bad, but it's it's not quite what I wanted. And it's not going to be clear enough when this is quite large. Secondly, it's too big. So I'm going to undo that, Control Z, come back over here, and I'm going to go more fonts. Bring the dialog box over. I'm going to go for Mistral. It is a little bit difficult to read, but given the fact uh, that this map is meant to have a slight Asian appearance, I think that gives a nice um, Asiatic um, theme to it. It's not perfect, but it will do for this map for the moment. I'm going to reduce the size of that height down just a tad. I'm going to bring it down to 16 and let's try adding that again. There we go. Now let's redraw that. Notice that a white line that comes around that text when I've redrawn it. There we go. And the reason for that is that the text, whenever we select text with this tool here, will automatically be placed on a sheet called text. No surprise. If I click there, you can see that we've got a glow effect on it. And if I edit that glow effect, you'll see it's got a glow of white, which is exactly what we wanted. So I think that's about right. Now let's go and name all of our cities. This uh, is relatively easy to do. I'm just going to click a name and call this Tirana. And I want Tirana to be this big city over here. Now, did you notice that that text just jumped down slightly? The reason for that is I've got the snap turned on. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to turn my snap off and I'm going to try that again. I tend to put text onto a map without the snap on. There we go. That worked that time. Let's zoom in now so that we can get some, some real detail in here. Let's start naming some of these other important towns and cities. Luzon can be here. Ramnais is over here and so forth. So I won't bore you. I'm going to quickly scan through and do all of these cities first. Now notice I'm doing the major cities as a priority because then I'm going to reduce the font and do the town names. I'll be back in a very short while. Okay, we're done with naming all the cities. Now what we're going to do is name some of the smaller areas. To do that, I'm going to click on my add text tool. So we're going to make Ihal quite a bit smaller. Let's make that 10 and see what that looks like. Fantastic. Great. 
So I'm now going to go through and continue uh, naming all of these. Targus, for example, like so. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to come back and we'll take another look at the map. We'll see how it's going to come out. And then we're going to start naming the ridge lines. So bear with me. I'll be right back in a second. Radio, now you can see by creating different sizes between the city labels and the town and uh, village labels, you've given some focus to the map, to the, to the areas that matter to the viewer. That's really, really important. Um, now, what we're going to do is name some of these mountain ranges. So what I'm going to do is draw a line down here, but to, to change this, I need to make sure that I'm on my text sheets and my structures is also on my text layer. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is to make sure that I can see my, uh, see my line nice and clearly. I'm going to change my color to bright red. And the reason for this is that when I draw my curved line across these mountains, I want to be able to see it. There we go. So there's my curved line that runs across that range there. Now, I'm going to change my, my color to a nice dark gray. I don't want it to be as dark as these other labels here. I want it to sort of fade into the mountains a little bit. So dark gray should work well for me. I'm going to click on draw text along a curve. I'm going to click on my curve and I'm going to call this mountain range. Um, the Roaring Dragon Range. Okay, so now you can see how to place text onto your map. You can see I've also added a title there. Um, this is not a hard activity once you learn the basics of manipulating that text. Now, what I'd like you to do is go back to your map and label it up. Start with the cities, then go down to the, uh, the villages, um, then use text along a curve to name your mountain ranges, your coastlines. Uh, I haven't done that here, but I, I will use it to, uh, to to really flesh out that map. The other thing to think about when labeling is think about the type of phonetics of the culture that would be uh, naming those cities um, and of the people who'd be making the map. Very, very important to get that right. Also think about the type of font that would be used. Now I've used a pretty extreme font here. I may change it a bit later on, but I wanted to show you that the use of font makes a big difference in how the map looks and how it is readable. So go and play with your map. Uh, please, um, once you've finished this, your map is really ready for the gaming table. It is good enough, more than good enough for the gaming table. So take a render of it and send it up to the Facebook site. Um, but we're going to do some more things with our map in the next tutorial. It is an optional tutorial, but I'm going to show you how to create political borderlines and a whole range of other sophisticated things. And to do that, we're going to need to start messing with the sheets and the layers in quite some detail. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in your next tutorial, but please finish off your math and let me take a look at it. Post them up on www.facebook.com slash Games.